Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for August 26th on yet another Friday. Yeah! <laughs> Demon Knight. Woo! Woo! Indeed, bro, indeed. Yeah. So here we are on a Friday. Let's start with a, a, a quick bit of preamble, guys. And I know people are going to probably chuckle at this one, but um, yes, I had the Samsung Gear VR. Had, because as most of you probably know, I returned it. And I had a Galaxy S7. Because of you guys, damn you, Note 7. I did. I got the Note 7. Because I figured I'm getting the newer 5 degree field of view Gear VR, I should probably have the Note 7. Is it going to make any difference? Hell if I know. But I got the Note 7. So there it is. And uh, we'll try it out. And we'll see. I imagine magnification wise the screen's probably going to look the same or will it i don't know i'll find out and i'll let you know unless somebody out there knows have you tried it with the note 7 versus another phone is there any difference doesn't matter i mean there's the obvious ones right performance processor if there's differences there but i'm talking sp specifically the screen size anyone know i suppose i could have googled that but hey there you go let's jump into it so First bit of news concerns some benchmarks that were released today. So not really VR news in the sense of products, reviews, that sort of thing, but VR news in terms of benchmarks and whether those benchmarks substantiate what you and me have been thinking for a while. And this certainly bears that out. So Hard OCP is a site that I've been going to for a very long time. I used to be big into overclocking on PCs. Could basically not give a rat's ass too much anymore because it's just really not that important anymore, right? But the site was always a good one. That, Tom's Hardware and Nantech, those were all sites I used to visit. But anyways, Hard OCP has posted some benchmarks for Project Cars, right? Which is a game most of us have for virtual reality. It's playable on both the Vive and the Rift, and it's been very challenging to wring out good performance from that damn game, right? And the benchmarks show why. So what I like about these benchmarks is they specifically, obviously they show the settings, which is one thing, right? Uh, they do not have the global super sampling enabled on the Vive, so it is a little bit more apples to apples in that sense. But they show the settings and they also indicate if reprojection kicked in at any point during the benchmark. And that's the interesting part. So take a look, the link's below. But basically of all the benchmarks, every single card, including my 1080 Founders Edition, kicked into reprojection mode. They could not escape it for the settings tested in the game okay there was one exception to that and that was the new brute force and ignorance titan x which managed to just do some incredible rendering and it was no slouch so it was able to completely surpass reprojection and not fall back on it at all so i thought that was a pretty startling result but it echoes kind of what we were thinking, right? When we spoke about the uh, the cards in the past. And it also substantiated yet again, but this time in VR, that the 1070 and 980 Ti are essentially neck and neck. The main difference is going to come from companies that decide to use VR works, right? So if we have examples of VR works in Unity or Unreal Engine, definitely the 1070 user is going to get better performance. But at this point in time, outside of that, they're pretty much neck and neck. So, hey, I'm still damn happy with my 1080. Remember, I was upgrading from Crossfire 290s, which didn't do much for me. I barely ever use Crossfire mode because it was, for me, next to useless compared to 660 Ti's and SLI mode, which almost every game I saw a benefit, right? 
Whereas with the Crossfire, not so much. When it worked, it was good. It just didn't work all that often. And it certainly didn't work for virtual reality. So yeah, I can't complain. I'm happy with my 1080. And uh, yeah, what about you guys? Anybody who upgraded, what are your thoughts going from the 980 to 1070, 1080, uh, or slower cards going into these new Pascal Ready cards? Let me know, curious. Next news piece deals with uh, the game that I talked about uh, <laughs> the last two days, Abduction. And I indicated at that time that my guess was it would probably be a few weeks, not months, before we see a virtual reality version. It looks like Cyan has confirmed that. So they're basically indicating it will be weeks. So probably just a few weeks by the sounds of it. And um, yeah that's going to uh, have oculus rift support so yeah it'll be neat to see how that game performs under vr so to date i've held off purchasing it but when it does go vr i'll purchase it take a look at it and let you guys know a you know just a quick look what the game's about and get into some technical on how it performs and look for that in general i've got a couple of videos I'm actually going to do a revisit on Elite Dangerous because a lot has kind of happened on that. I'm also going to do a revisit on raw data, but more on that in a few minutes. Now, next article deals with uh, Oculus and, again, another thing we talked about on this channel. So, one of the things I mentioned with regards to Oculus is, look, publicly, they are being extremely coy about the chaperone mode about room scale VR because the bottom line is it would make them look like this was something they didn't take into account, right? So it's easier to publicly state, you know what, we don't believe room scale is that important. But behind the scenes, all their actions are literally showing the opposite. They do care and they care a lot, right? We've seen the tracking cameras, the, the ability to add multiple cameras to Oculus Rift. We have seen other examples, including today's, where uh, there was a game called Dead, Dead and Alive, I believe, a Western-style game. And it includes a chaperone-style boundary system, right? Now, yeah, it was called yeah, Dead and Buried, sorry, Dead and Buried, the game. The devs asked the reviewer at the end of the session, did you notice anything different? He was like, no, I didn't notice anything different. The dev said, put on the HMD again and walk over here. So he put the rift back on, walked over to the boundary, and sure enough, a boundary popped up. And it wasn't just any boundary, it was a game-themed boundary. So for this game, Dead and Buried, it was a barbed wire fence that popped up. So instead of the line that we're used to seeing in HTC Vive, and dollars to donuts, you know HTC is going to follow suit and at some point, they're going to have game-themed chaperone. Because, in my opinion, it's a small thing, it's a subtle thing, but it would really help with retaining immersion. Because that's been my biggest complaint to date for chaperone. It's fantastic. It does definitely assist you with not smashing headfirst into a wall, smashing your controller into walls, breaking stuff, right? But... It does so at a cost, and the cost is immersion. So even at its most minimal impact level, which is literally just a line on the ground, dotted, that only appears when you step to the boundary, it still throws up a signal to you, to your brain, that, hey, you're just playing a video game, right? So what I like about Rift's approach, and who knows how widespread it is, it could be just this game that they're testing it, but I suspect this will become a feature in the future, it's themed and you know good good thinking but again like with the controllers what does oculus have right and it could be too little too late for a lot of these things but they've got the benefit of time htc vive has already come to market with that solution htc vive can make improvements on that the key being don't take too long to do that because your market share is growing and growing, and the longer it grows without you introducing that peripheral, the more the likelihood that devs aren't going to support it, right? So they really got to they gotta step up with that, and I think they are. And again, it's the opposite of what they're saying publicly. 
look behind the scenes and absolutely chaperone room scale it is a focus of oculus make no doubts about that next article has to do with uh, HTC this time. So we're going from Rift to HTC and their planning for the Vive 2. So we talked about them starting to plan. We've got some more details on that. So at this point, they claim it's all theoretical. It's all whiteboard uh, brainstorming. It's not actual hardware prototypes at this point in time, right? So they were asked some questions, executives at HTC on you know, what kind of things were being planned. And of course, the big question was, is wireless a focus? Which, understandably, they were a little bit shy on and didn't get into. But between me and you guys, if we did a poll asking all of us, you know, would we favorably view wireless? I mean, it would be just a landslide, right? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be 90 something percent would be my guess in favor of a wireless solution if it was truly apples to apples and didn't have a latency hit associated with it, right? Like if you got the exact same performance, of course we would take wireless every single freaking time. That's no surprise, right? Now, the next update, uh, update slash news has to do with one of my favorite, as you guys may know, HTC Vive games, Raw Data. So Raw Data has recently had a massive update that has added a mission and it's basically like a, a platform, still, still using room scale VR, but platform style mission with uh, laser beams, they've added uh, a defense turret that can shoot plasma beams, new enemies, upgrades of existing enemies. And there's always, to me, there's always a line because there's nothing easier in the game development world than taking an existing monster, doing a palette shift, and giving it a new name, right? Because you're not having to redesign the assets, you're just changing color values and boom, you've got a new monster, right? So one of the new creatures that you encounter is pretty much that, a repalette, right, of an existing, but the other is a new monster. So that's kind of nice because I was getting a little tired of the uh, same, same feel, right? But the game has an amazing ability to kind of lift itself above just being a wave shooter, right? It disguises that very well. It's very innovative in how it does that. So uh, we've also got uh, additional weapons, just a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to probably do an update, a quick look update uh, on raw data because of this. Uh, maybe there were people on the fence before who watched my first quick look and other reviews on the net and still aren't really sure. Maybe this can help you decide. So after this video, that's what I'll be looking at. Raw data, the enhancements. I'll try to focus on those enhancements in the video and check them out and show you guys. The Next news piece concerns the UK, and I want to be really global about these stories because demographically, a lot of you guys watching these videos are coming from all over the world. There's a, a huge chunk in North America, absolutely, but UK is actually third uh, for watching. So it's something I want to cover because, and sometimes it's just that envy, right? One North America gets an RPG first, Europe and the UK have to wait, or vice versa, right? Look at Xenoblade Chronicles, perfect example of that. I would have been just as happy with the UK uh, language version. We didn't need a North American accent. We could have just done with the UK one, in my opinion, right? Like, did it need additional localization? But whatever, neither here nor there, whole different article. Where I'm going with this is there's a UK retailer, kind of like a GameStop, they're called Game. And Game is offering HTC Vives on a payment plan. So I reported probably three weeks ago now that there was a price hike. Actually, holy crap, more like seven weeks ago, the HTC Vive price hike in the UK, right? Due to currency fluctuations and whatever else they wanted to throw in on that statement, right? Well, now this retailer is offering a payment plan. So you're basically putting a 10% down payment, 759 pounds, right? So it's about a 76 pound down payment, just over $100, right? US, that would work out to over 24 payments. But 
with about a 14 and a half percent interest rate okay so at the end of it you're paying probably about well you're paying the 10 percent you know the 70 80 pounds deposit and then another 70 80 over the course of that but the advantage is you get the HTC Vive now. So I have no doubt that's a good marketing move. It's going to be tempting to a lot of people that were on the fence, could not justify the expense, but can justify it as a pay a little bit each month expense, right? So uh, curious how that's going to impact adoption rate and just numbers in general in, in the UK. It would be really cool to see a before and after. So. If there's anybody watching this that's going to take advantage of that, let me know. I'm curious. Um, hey, all is fair in marketing, in my opinion. There has been a super strong demand for pre-order sales for the Sony PlayStation VR. I know in Canada here, I missed it so quick because it sold out that quick. Now, Sony is claiming that this is their best <laughs> uh, pre-order sale ever. In other words, they've moved more pre-order units. The problem with that story is they don't say how many. Of course not, that's under wraps. But if we're speaking historically, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, you know, there's nothing to back up those figures, right? Uh, right now, there are stats that are completely unsubstantiated, right? But I'm repeating it for the news that it is. Take that with a grain of salt. My personal opinion is I wouldn't put too much weight into that without understanding how many units we're talking about, how many was it before, right? Or any other catches that they throw in under that and bury that statement in, right? So the September 7th is is going to be, uh, there's going to be a PlayStation or a Sony event. And they are expected at that time to basically launch an updated version of the Move controller. So it's going to be interesting. What I'm curious about, now technically there might be still enough time supply chain wise, but it's going to be pretty tight, is when those orders ship out, are they going to be with the new Move controller, the VR ones, or are they going to be with the old ones, right? That's going to be the key because one of the things that they're touting with the new one is better tracking. Well, better tracking is only a good thing in virtual reality. So that is what I'm curious about. I'm sure we're going to find out as we get closer to this. I'm going to see if I can reach out to people that I know that work at Sony and if I can get any nuggets out of them about that at all. That would be, that would be interesting. The last news story has to do with another survey, the same organization that did the survey that I reported on last week, asking about which development system they're working on and which future ones they would cater to. And in that survey, Vive came out ahead. But as with what I was just talking about, take these with a grain of salt. We don't know what the numbers were. I think in the last one, it was 500 devs, but who knows how that was weighted, right? Were most of those game devs? Were they specific genre? Were they experience? The numbers without clarification on any of that are pretty meaningless. And I think this is the same. But what's interesting is this time they were asked about exclusivity, right? Would they create exclusive platform titles? And it was nice to see 78% say no, right? And... 22% only say yes. Now, you could look at that and say, well, that's one out of five that are interested in an exclusive title. True, right? So it's not the death knell by any means. It might even be a ramp up, but at least we know that, look, there are going to be a lot of non-exclusives. So interesting to see where that lands as always. All right, guys, I am itching to play raw data. I can't wait to get in to check out that update and share that with you guys. So it will be cheers for now and definitely catch you on the flip side.